la. All right, let me fill you in as best I can because it's sort of an ongoing saga. I thought it would be nice. I got contacted by Mary McCormick, who played my wife in the movie Private Parts. I got contacted by the <laughs> producer of her television show. She's on USA Network. They thought they were doing a great thing. He thought it would be fun if Eric, the actor, got involved in their show. Eric, the dumbass, made you. He would give him like four lines or something. So. Yeah. So he said to us, hey, would you, if, can you set that up? I said, I'll set it up. I said, but tell the guy he has no idea what he's in for. <laughs> Eric, the complaining midget. So like now he's like, oh, my God. He, he, now he's at the point he's like, like, I just wanted to give this guy a couple of lines and have him have fun. But he goes, I, I didn't realize how appropriate all those things are that, you know, Fred plays. Eric, yeah, the he, annoying yeah. motherfucker. Last then, week, we had already learned that he sent him this long letter letter telling him why he couldn't work with Johnny work Frado. With Johnny Frado, and he had to maybe represent himself. Right. All the guy asked was, should I work directly with you, or do you have a manager? Eric, now you're working. Yeah, all the guy said was, do you want me to talk to you, or do you want me to talk to a manager? And then Eric just went into a long letter about what's wrong with his relationship with Johnny Frado, his manager. <laughs> it was amazing. Eric, is Johnny representing you or not? Yeah, he is. I mean... Is he there on the know. line? I think he's asleep. Oh. <laughs> well, Poor anyway... Johnny. So I guess Johnny composed the letter to Mr. Strauss, who is the executive producer <laughs> of this TV show. Uh-huh. Mr. Strauss, I'm contacting you in behalf of my client, Eric Lynch, a.k.a. Eric, the actor, in regards to a role on your show in plain sight. Before my client will agree to anything, he has a short list of questions and demands. And Eric, you sanctioned this letter, right? Yes. Okay. One, how long will he be gone, and what are the dates that he will be there? Okay. Now, oh, wait a minute. This is amazing to me, because no. all Eric does is say, get me on shows, get me on shows. Oh, wait. Get me on shows. All right. The first question isn't that bad. Wait, wait, just listen to this. <laughs> Two. How much will he be paid? If it's only SAG scale, he says he won't do it. Uh, he says that the ratings for the episode of Fringe he was on were through the roof and that he knows his value. Oh, my God. Whoa. I don't know where he gets his information. Is, in, in is a, Johnny saying that? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I looked it up. They actually went down the week from oh the week God. before the week Eric was on. Do you know that, Eric? I always heard that they were not. No. When Eric was on Fringe, John John Hine knows this for a fact. What were the ratings the week before and then the week Eric was on? To give you a comparison. It, like, dropped slightly. Not even that slightly, Howard. Really? And what? why would Eric think? Eric was on for three he seconds. He threw the roof. He knows his value. Eric, you know, if you want to be an actor, you got to get a couple of acting roles under your belt. I mean, don't be so pompous. Go ahead, John. The week before Eric was on, they got 5.7 million viewers. Right. The episode Eric was on, they got 5.2 million viewers. Right. So they lost half a million viewers. Yeah, right. so you essentially did nothing, or maybe you lost them some viewers. Right. Hello? Hello. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to say Every, do you want to say anything about that? Everybody was telling me that from what I was told, that the viewers went up. Right. Well, you now heard the numbers. What do you think? I think I think, pe I think people are blowing smoke up your ass. <laughs> you, are ask you, still... a you ask a person question, let them fucking answer the question. All right, number three. I don't care about the question. I don't well, care the about the answer. Well, the point is, though, does he still have this demand for more than SAG since he doesn't do anything to the ratings? Yes, he does. <laughs> three. Will he receive residuals for multiple airings of the episode? Four, listen to this. Will there be a masseuse on the set? You're, 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 you have four lines. What do you need a masseuse for? In the last couple of months, my hip and left knee have been bothering me. And if I sit for too long, they'll, they'll probably need that. Wow. Listen to this guy. Why do you ask to go and do these things when you can't? Wait, here, we ready? Five. Is there an Arby's or McDonald's close to the set? 
If not, will there be a runner to drive as far as is needed to go there? <laughs> <laughs> they serve food. What do you, you need specifically in Arby's or McDonald's? I actually did ask Johnny to remove that, and obviously he didn't. Okay. Six. Is there a possibility that this could become a recurring role? If so, <laughs> could they move the production to San Francisco? Stop it, Howard. You're making that up. Out, as it would be easier to get to and from the set. He also wants me to let you know that it would be less expensive for you. So you want them to move the entire production? That was kind of more Johnny's idea. You sure? Yes. How did it come up? It right. just came up. Eric, it but you understand, Eric, you understand that this is like a, you know, the guy actually said, the show show guy, you know, whatever he is, producer, he said, you know, is Eric really reliable? He said, should I have a standby actor? Because he goes, believe it or not, even though it's four lines, it's actually. It's important. Yeah, they, they can't just cut it out. It's integral to the show. Uh -huh. what, you know, it's part of the plot. So he's like, hey, can I rely on this guy? Do you really ha need or is it cost effective? To spend a lot of money for four lines? All right, so that was just the opening part of the letter. Now now for Eric's writers, it says. Oh. One, a co-star credit on a solo card. How do you even know about that? I know about the business. <laughs> and you want to be, you, you re, do you feel ashamed saying you're a co-star when you're doing four lines? I mean, I, mean, I know. What? There you go again. Stop asking people questions and then fucking cutting them off. Well, till I get an answer, it's a fucking month. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I was about to say, hey, I know it's more guest star than it is co-star. Why do you care about the credit? Just go on the show and learn to act. How many opportunities do you get? All right, listen to his right Now for Eric's writers. One, a co-star credit on a solo card. Two, listen to this. A two-bedroom suite at a five-star hotel. Four-star is acceptable if the pool and jacuzzi area is nice. I think he's moving in for a year. Yeah. Dude, you have four lines. You're going to be there. What are you carrying? I can't believe you're going to blow this. Three, a stretch limousine to take him to and from set to the hotel or anywhere else he might need to go. Four, an assistant to his assistant, John. Eric says that John is invaluable to him, and if he has to worry about anything other than Eric, it could affect his performance. <laughs> Eric I'm, would... I'm, wait, unlike the John that works for you, I know it is spelled that way, but it's pronounced different. How is it pronounced? Yawn. Yawn, okay. Five, Eric would like to have input on the script, the storyline, and his blocking. Six, four 20-ounce Pepsi-Colas a day. What? Seven, and this is all in caps, absolutely no last-minute script changes. Three exclamation marks. Eight, uh, Mr. Lynch also wants you to understand he does not want to be blown up, mutilated, or murdered in any fashion. <laughs> Nine, he does not want any contact with some of the dangerous wildlife that inhabit that region, such as black bears, mountain lions, coyotes, bobcats, spiders, <laughs> werewolves, or any venomous snakes. Where does he think they're putting him? Then, after all of that nonsense, it goes, I'm looking forward to hearing your response. Oh, <laughs> these poor people. You know, Marlon Brando doesn't get this kind of rider. But how? Uh, when are they shooting uh, this? Marlon Brando's been dead for years. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a joke. But when are they shooting this, Howard? They don't even have time to, to respond to this yeah. nonsense. They just, they, just, they just were doing a nice thing for Eric. This is what and, uh, and, and he needs and a, a good deed goes on. He needs a stretch limo. He's ten inches long, and he needs to a do whatever limo. he wants. Yeah, how tall are you? Ten uh, inches? <laughs> how many inches? Oh, are you? I'm not ten. I'm three foot. He's three feet. Still don't need a stretch. <laughs> he needs a stretch. And by the way, Gary needs to check his facts because he said he's surprised that this guy's never changed his number. Gee, Gary, you never gave. The number to this guy to either myself or Johnny. Uh, right. I'm looking, Whatever. I'm, I'm looking Email forward. Address. No one cares, Eric. I'm looking forward to hearing your response and hope that this will be a pleasurable experience for everyone. 
Unfortunately, I'll probably be out of town during your filming days, but please feel free to contact my son, Johnny Jr., day or night, if you have any problems on the set at all. He loves working with Eric. <laughs> uh, P.S. Could you please explain to Eric that New Mexico is a U.S. state and does not require a passport? Best <laughs> <laughs> regards, Johnny Frado. Wow. Well. I, I don't need that explained to me. I don't know why the hell Johnny put that in there because <laughs> Cause he's I have been to New Mexico. Well, why did he get the impression that you felt you needed a passport? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, Eric, is there any part of you that understands that, like, you're not that important, that the guy's kind of doing it as a bit, and yes, he's giving you a shot on TV, which will be exciting for you, and it is kind of nice, because, you know, maybe uh, people will get excited uh, to w listen to our show. But you haven't really proved to be a great value yeah. to television shows yet. It's kind of like a little fun thing you get to do. You, you realize that this might come off bad. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> now that you hear it? Usually people who are starting an acting career and getting a break like this, and, and, and have actually been extras on set and they're just dying for any kind of speaking yeah. role, they generally act very grateful and humble and try to ingratiate themselves to the entire production. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> His agent is on the line. <laughs> You can hear him in the background. Oh, that's funny. I mean, the ratings on Fringe went down. <laughs> Eric should demand less money. He, wants, he should uh, do it for free. He, he wants should less. Pay them. Uh, because the ratings went down, I want less money. <laughs> He's demanding some kind of major negotiation. Right. Probably, probably half of the stuff that was put in that letter was from when Johnny first took the Ambien pill is now not now. <laughs> Johnny, you there? Johnny's turning over. It sounds like Johnny's moving the phone around. What percentage of money does Johnny get from if you get this gig? Well, none. But I hope, hopefully, at some point, if he starts getting me steady work, then he can start getting. So Johnny's like doing this for agent. free. Johnny's doing this for free. <laughs> well, and Eric, Eric yells at him. Eric, you're not a big star. B, they're doing this as a kind of fun thing to do with the show. C, you got to act a little grateful. And D, I don't even know if this is going to happen now. I don't. I think these people are starting to get a little woozy. Masseuse on the set. Yeah, masseuse on the set. For, do you have a massage every day? No. All right. So, what makes you think you need to go to a movie, a, a movie set, or a TV show set, and and you need a massage that day? You sit around every day. Okay. Yeah, I, rem I remember back on Fringe, there was a lot of time sitting up in it. But that's what well, you so do anyway. You got time to massage your own hip. Well. No, no, I don't do that all the time. Lately, since my hip has been bothering me, I sit up till it starts hurting, then I lay down and rest the hip and the knee. So do that all day, and then when they call you to the set, go get, get a sit up. Maybe go. Jan can help you out with that. Last time it was like two hours on the Mackerel. set. Uh, wow. He has no clue. The, that the people aren't looking to spend millions of dollars to have him around. Imagine he became a big star. Oh, it'd be impossible. Like Hollywood that, would go bankrupt. I like that his agent is snoring in the background. <laughs> <laughs> the great Johnny Frado. Uh, it's the best. Johnny's doing Wake it. Wake your ass up, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny's doing it because he thinks it's funny. You know? <laughs> he loves it. He loves all. He loves representing Eric. <laughs> all right, listen, Eric. I don't know what's going to be with this show, but just realize you're pressing this guy's buttons and you're, you're kind of wearing him out because he has, like, a whole production to worry yeah, about. Yeah, you're four lines. There's a whole script he's got to get together. Yeah. Every week. So just realize that, okay? Right. Why don't you just go down there and do the show and just hope that things work out and that you hopefully get paid? 
and that you're really easy to work with and people will start recommending you to others. No, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Uh, point well taken, Johnny. All right, Eric. Uh, I wish you luck. Oh, if I was a normal, able-bodied actor, then yes, I could go down and do that. But there are certain things that certain things you have need. got to be done. Okay. If you were a normal, able-bodied actor, you'd be sitting at home. Right. Like the other able-bodied actors. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Eric. And I do wish you luck. I hope to see you on the show. I will watch if you are on. Okay. All right. I'm a fan. Thank you. Bye. Um, bye. <laughs> Isn't that a great letter? Like, that was written 100% serious. Wow. Yeah. Good night, Johnny. Boy, I wish I was doing what Johnny was doing. I know. He sounds so peaceful. No. Yeah. Sounds like he's having a great day. All right. So here's a couple of things I wanted to get to. Um, Lee Corso says, fuck it, on ESPN. And then he has to apologize. I always like that. How can you pick against SMU? Look at them over there. <laughs> Red, white, and blue. USA. <laughs> ah, fuck it. <laughs> hey. Got it. Glad there's a delay. <laughs> Shasta, shame on you. Watch that mouth. There are a bunch of jocks having a good time. What the heck was going on there? I don't know, but uh, then he has to apologize. Earlier today on College Game Day, while picking the SMU Houston game, I got a bit excited and used an expedive I shouldn't have expedive. used. Expedive. I apologize, and I can promise <laughs> it won't happen again. He go. obviously had that written for him. He's ne Yeah, you think? I, <laughs> he's never going to say the word fuck again. <laughs> or expedite. Right, expedite. <laughs> I, I obviously said an expedite I shouldn't have. Right. Uh, before I move on from Eric the Actor, just one more thing. This was Eric calling in to Superfan Celebrity Roundtable. And Howie Mandel asked Eric to do some voices. Uh -huh. I thought it was particularly fun because Beavis and Butthead is one of Eric's favorite. Mike Judge was there. And here was Eric auditioning for them. All right. Hey, Mike, All right. Eric yeah, Eric you, is Eric. an actor. Any chance you've got something for him on <laughs> Beavis and Butthead? Yeah, I'm listening to this voice, which I've listened to many, <laughs> many hours over the <laughs> years. Uh, yeah, hey, maybe that, uh, yeah, you know, let me let me study on that. If you if you throw out the I slightest like Eric, the bit of a, of a lure, you know Eric will. Eric, <laughs> Eric, <laughs> Eric, the voice. Well, you know, and <laughs> Eric, do you do voices? You're Can committed. you do voices, Eric? <laughs> yeah, I we do voices. Let's hear. Give us let's one. hear one. You know how there's always a problem with Eric's phone. It's always you know. It's, right. Yeah. He he wonders why I talk over him. It is such a long wait. <laughs> Voice, Eric, or an accent. Or okay, let me try. All right. Uh. Hello, I'm from Tennessee. How are you all doing? <laughs> Could you put Eric back on? I think that was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Eric, can you do Beavis or Butthead? Uh oh, I bet he could do Beavis. Uh, kind of. I mean, let's hear that. Is the audition? Big audition. Let me give it a shot. Okay. <laughs> hey, butthead. That was good. 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 Very good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Eric, nice. Eric, thanks for calling in. I'm, I'm getting nervous now. Yes, I can. Isn't that great audition? <laughs> Let me give it a shot. Hey, butthead. Very nice. <laughs> Eric, I think, would be a good voice on that cartoon. Maybe that's his next gig. Speaking of Beavis and Butthead, I was watching it.